Welcome back to Bluegrass on this beautiful fall afternoon. Today I'm out with Max, a little Rottweiler puppy, and we're going to try to decide whether or not a Rottweiler might be uh, the right dog for you and your family. Okay, so come on Max, we're going to go for a walk. Now, as we're walking, let me call some of these dogs, show you what we got going on. Here dogs, come on! You know, like always, uh, what I have is <laughs> <laughs> a whole bunch of Labrador retrievers, okay? So I am not in any way trying to present myself as, a, as, as an expert on Rottweilers, but I do know a little bit about uh, big square-headed dogs because uh, I've trained a lot and uh, I've owned a few, you know? So um, we're just going to take a walk, and kind of the first thing that I want you to understand, and I say this in all my videos, is that there's a fundamental like level of training that all dogs should have if you want them to successfully navigate a human world. They should all come when they're called, they should be still when they're told, they should have good manners from the neighbor's perspective, they should start social situations off by being calm, attentive, and polite, and they should refrain from behavior that's dangerous, destructive, or rude. So when people, like, they hire me to help them raise a dog, that's what they're hiring me for. Now there's a lot of different approaches to dog training, there's a lot of different uh, systems and methodologies, and I don't really care about what you end up choosing, I just care that you choose something and you stick with it, okay? So what we do around here is we do lots and lots of exercise and lots of structured activities and we try to like every day get up and just do a little bit better than we did the day before. And it all starts uh, with coming out, this is what we call our pre-adventure area. Okay, so we come out here and we, uh, you know, we start training dogs kind of the natural way where we bring our mentor dogs out and we let the other dogs follow them around and uh, get our environmental socialization and desensitization out of the way and help the dogs understand that I'm here to help them live a better life. So all the freedom that they want here, it just comes from uh, kind of following along with the rules and um, helping them understand that making me happy leads to me taking them out back and making them happy. Okay, so out of this big group of labs, we have a couple of outliers. We have a Rottweiler and we have a German Shepherd, right? <laughs> and that's kind of the ratio that I like to keep, right? I'm not, uh, I'm, not <laughs> I'm not out here doing a Rottweiler video because I'm trying to get a bunch of people with Rottweilers to send me their dogs, right? It's just that uh, Max has been in some videos and when, he gets in, when dogs get into videos, everybody wants to, uh, you know, kind of know my opinion. Well, uh, this is my opinion. Max, come here. This is my opinion of Max. He's an awesome dog. And if I ever found myself in the market for a big square-headed dog that could hang around my house and uh, you know scare evildoers away just by their mere presence and uh, you know, super deep growly vocalization and sometimes surly personality, a Rottweiler would be, uh, you know, it'd be up there. I mean, there's other dogs I might choose first, but it'd be up there somewhere on the list. Uh, I like Max. He's an awesome dog. And when we go up to the Exercise or Small Challenges course, you're going to see that like basic training with the Rottweilers, it's a very simple process. Um, the only thing I would really add is like when you do your, your basic training, do not neglect your socialization, right? I mean, that's what we're out here doing right now. Letting Max get out and learn how to be a dog, letting him learn about the natural environment, letting him learn that uh, like sometimes he's going to like pal around with some dogs and sometimes there's going to be conflict and, and none of it is a, you know, it's a big deal, you know? And because that, that's the thing, guys, like Rottweilers, of course, like, uh, you know, like people, people know of them as kind of a guard dog breed. Uh, but ultimately, uh, they're not really that much that prone to to violence uh, as compared to other types of dogs. The problem is, is that they're so big and powerful. Is that if things kind of go south, uh, it's, it's really a big deal. Okay, and that's what that's what happens when you're trying to do research on a dog. You'll get on forums and you'll you know you'll you'll read breed histories and things like that. And everybody wants to gloss over uh, you know whatever whatever kind of little things about the breed that aren't perfect. They want to gloss over them, act like they're not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal. You know, if you get a big square-headed dog that weighs 100 pounds and he decides to uh, eat your neighbor's dog or, or, or bite your neighbor's kid or whatever, then you're going to have to have the physicality required to stop him. You know, and you might say, well, Stoney, what about early training? Well, sure, early training reduces the incidence rate of failure, right? But it doesn't take it to zero. And so that's kind of my thing with dogs. It's like, if you're going to have a big, tough dog, then make sure that you can control a big, tough dog. And it all starts with early socialization and early training. But ultimately, uh, it's kind of really uh, just uh, a combination of a decision that you make to do what's necessary to keep the dogs in line and making sure that you're actually physically capable of uh, keeping the dogs in line. Okay. 
I will tell you this, if you want to cut down, we'll just go this way, cameraman. If you want to drastically cut down on any kind of troubles that you're going to have with a Rottweiler, you can do it uh, just simply with a little bit of walking in the morning and a little bit of walking in the evening. Because for all the talk they have of the dogs being, you know, theoretically working dogs at one point in their uh, development, whatever, the, the, the truth is that they're, they're big square dogs and a good walk, look, here's a good walk, right? Okay, as the walk goes up, any kind of misbehavior, any kind of destructive behavior, any kind of problems with the neighbors, it all goes down. Always remember there's an inverse relationship between exercise and misbehavior or exercise and aggression or exercise and anxiety. In other words, more exercise, less problems. And it's especially true with dogs that uh, have a moderate to low energy output level. And what you'll notice about a Rottweiler, like if you ever you know, train some, if you watch them, uh, when they're running, they'll come out and they've got, they can ha kind of have a fairly concentrated energy expenditure, right? Okay, but they have relatively low endurance and they have a long recharge rate. So if you're the kind of person and you've got uh, the proper environment and you have a little bit of time every morning and every evening to uh, exercise your dog, uh, Rottweiler is a good choice for that because you can take them out and you can run them real hard just for a few minutes and then it kind of takes them all day to charge their batteries up and then at the end of the day you go do it again and uh, they'll sleep till the morning time. And so from a from a professional dog trainer's uh, point of view, uh, and I'm, I mean my, my facilities obviously a little different than others but so I guess I should say that differently from a person who regularly manages large groups of dogs in open environments with a transient population of people and other dogs Rottweilers are pretty easy for me to take care of as long as they came to my kennel when they were young okay now you know, here's the here's just the truth and I'm gonna tell you from a business perspective when people call me with adolescent and post adolescent Rottweilers I, I, I don't uh, I don't take them, right, okay? And here's why, because I have to make an upside downside evaluation for every dog that comes here. Upside of a 100 pound dog coming here and getting some good obedience training and getting some remedial socialization is that I've helped another dog, you know, uh, live a healthy and happy life, okay? The downside is that a big, powerful, square-headed dog, if they do mess up, you know, a lot of the dogs that I have here, they're pretty much defenseless as it, as it comes to like standing up for themselves. So uh, if I have a big Rottweiler here and I would say I was trying to work through an aggression issue in the a, in a post-adolescent phase, well, the downside of what would happen if he had conflict is so great that it's not a risk that I personally am willing to take uh, with uh, my boarders, you know. And uh, so I'm sure that'll get some bad con uh, you know, comments. But look, take your dog somewhere else. Like I said, I am not in the business of trying to advertise to everybody. It just doesn't work out. All right, so now we're going to walk up to the Exercise of Small Challenges course. Uh, these dogs are going to be a little fatigued, so uh, they're compliance rate on the exercise small challenges course will be you know that would be a little bit lethargic but it kind of give you an idea of what it's like to take a rottweiler puppy on a walk and uh, then what they're capable of in terms of obedience as compared to say maybe some labs let's go do some school work okay guys now we're back at the kennel and we're on my exercise with small challenges course and look even though he's not a labrador <laughs> Uh, Max says, I'm a pretty good student, Stoney. I want to be on YouTube. And I said, okay, all right. So uh, what did we just do? We just went on a walk, okay? And, you know, for all of the research that goes into buying dogs and all the funny things that people say about dogs and all the talking about the dog breed's history and stuff, you know, what do we really usually want to do with the dog? We want them to kind of hang around the house. We want them to, you know, maybe go to the pizza parlor with us. And uh, we'd like to take a walk with our friends. Okay. And so that's the thing when you have a Rottweiler. A lot of people, they buy the Rottweiler to be like a guard dog. And I mean, it's pretty cool. You know, big square headed dogs, uh, they have a certain amount of deterrent value. And the purpose of early training uh, with a guard dog is just simply to, uh, you know, minimize the liability associated with having that type of dog. Okay. So like if you just wanting to minimize your liability, socialization and good early uh, obedience is super important. Okay. Now, not everybody that buys a Rottweiler, maybe even like the minority of people that buy Rottweilers are actually looking for a guard dog. Okay. I mean, that's just, that's just what the truth is. Uh, they like the dogs. They think they look cool. It's kind of like people buy four wheel drives. I mean, how many people do you see driving? Hey, get out of the way. <laughs> how many people do you see driving four wheel drives, like big lifted Jeeps with big tires, and uh, they've never even been in four wheel drive, never had a speck of mud on them, never been over a rock. You know, people just like the way they look. I think from my experience, for the most part, people that buy Rottweilers, uh, 
First off, they like the way they look. And uh, there are some cool stories associated with Rottweilers. You know, they talk about how uh, they uh, came to Germany with the Romans and the Romans left and the dogs stayed. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'll tell you one that's funny. I'll get up here and show you one I think's funny, you know. And so how much of that stuff is true? Well, I mean, I think all of it's kind of true. Do I know that a dog that looked exactly like this one uh, was hanging out with Romans? No, I don't know. But do I pretty much know that, like, when you want a big, uh, tough guard dog that you go with a, with a large boned, muscular, uh, square headed dog? Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that whatever the Romans had, I mean, you know, it was close enough to this, right? Um, so you, you hear those stories like, I get this dog. It's what's so funny though is that you're not a Roman, right? You're not going to war tomorrow. You're not, uh, like this is what I think is neat, is one of the things that's in like all the little Rottweiler stories is they talk about how, you know, you would, the dogs would help uh, drive the cattle to market and then people would put a bag of money, which back then I guess would have been silver or gold, around the dog's neck and so then nobody would want to steal the money. I don't know about that, right? Okay, because let's just be honest. If there was a bag of gold and this little, uh, if, this, if this little Max, Max Expedition bag was full of gold and I really wanted it, would the fact that it was on some big square headed dog's neck uh, really deter me from stealing it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't, right? Okay, so I'm not a Roman. I'm not going off to war. Come on. Uh, I don't need to put a bag of money around the dog's neck. Uh, what do I need, right? Maybe I need. A little bit of a guard dog around the house. What do I want out of a guard dog? I want to maximize the deterrent value of the dog while simultaneously minimizing the liability of the dog, which is where early socialization and uh, training comes in. And then mainly, I just want a pal. And uh, you know, when you go to picking out a pal, it's kind of like picking out a human pal or human to live with. You kind of got to like the way they look. You know, like I picked a cameraman because I like the way she looked and I don't know why the cameraman picked me, but you know, whatever. But like when I look at this dog, I mean, I have, he's got a unique look to him. I like Rottweilers. I like the way they're just not, they're not for me. Like, you know what I, what I say, right? It's all dogs want to be labs. All labs want to be black. So that's the dog I like. And if I'm not, if I don't have a black Labrador retriever, because I do have some guard dogs myself, they're farm dogs. Uh, and what are my farm dogs always? There's some version of a German Shepherd or a Malinois or Dutch Shepherd, uh, you know. And that's what I like. And I like them because they're super athletic and, you know, like there are no physical impediments that are going to keep an evildoer safe if they come here. I have high fences. They can jump the fence. My neighbor has Rottweilers and they can't jump any fences, right? Okay. They can't jump a four foot fence, but it keeps you from wanting to jump the fence and getting in there with them. And they got a, like I said, they got a big head, big body, deep guttural bark. That's pretty neat. Okay. And so just the, just the presence of this type of dog, it's a, it's a deterrent. So like... Is a Rottweiler right for you? I don't know, you know? Like, uh, I think you just gotta go visit some and see. And here's what I wanna tell you about uh, picking one, though. Is one of the things that you're gonna see, and it just comes in all the time, when people talk about, like, uh, training these dogs, is they talk about being a strong leader, okay? Guys, there's a lot of different ways to be a strong leader. If you want to be a good dog trainer for your dog and you want to buy a big dog like this, okay, you have to be a strong leader because as these dogs get, uh, as they get bigger, I mean, if something was to go wrong, and it's no, not really any more likely to go wrong with this type of dog than any other similar types of dogs, or especially terriers, right? If something did go wrong, are you going to be able to control a 100-pound dog, right? I mean, physically, can you do it? And if you can't do it physically, have you put in the kind of work that allows you to do it mentally? Okay, so you have to pick a system that helps you maximize the dog's potential, but you have to pick a system that max maximizes your potential as a dog trainer or handler, okay? And that's really the key, and I think that's, that's what I would caution you about as it relates to being on YouTube, okay? YouTube has become home of hucksters and technique collectors. Okay, you're talking heads that talk about training dogs and show you little three and four minute clips of training dogs. And so you watch that and you think, oh, I'm gonna get my clicker out and uh, do a little training and I'll take my dog you know, to puppy class and now my Rottweiler's gonna grow up to be an obedient and well-socialized and 100% controllable dog. I don't believe it, right? So when you go to picking your methodology, right, for training your Rottweiler, find someone who can demonstrate competence with Rottweilers. Right? Okay, it's just that simple. If you want to raise a, a Labrador Retriever, find someone that can demonstrate competence with Labrador Retrievers. Okay? And that's, that's all I'm telling you. That's my very best advice. So when you say, hey, Stoney, you know, is a Rottweiler right for me and my family? 
I, you know, I don't even feel like I'm uh, enough of an expert on Rottweilers to answer that question. But there are people out there that are because they've been living with them for decades. Okay, and now once you start talking to those people, you have to understand that all the different people that like any given type of dog, they have their own preferences in terms of the behavioral and physical characteristics of the dog. And that's called bloodline specific traits and tendencies. Okay, so you wanna find a, a, a dog breeder, you know, or a dog aficionado that can listen to you, explain your interests, your short range goals and your long range goals, and then point you in the direction of a bloodline that has the you know, potential to mature into the type of dog that would fit in well in your lifestyle, in your environment, and your, you know, the uh, unique characteristics of your particular uh, family situation. Okay, so that's my advice on Rottweilers. And uh, so is a Rottweiler right for you? I don't know. Go find somebody that knows about Rottweilers. Go see them in person. Have them demonstrate competence in the breed, okay? And then have them point you in the right direction. All right, I'll see you guys next week. Very nice. You did a good job, Max. You're a very smart dog.